preparation and on both legs, terrace is intact. Seven, lovely wrists and hands. and spread. Place the susu straight down. Good, Jim. Spread, spread, spread. Now keep the turnout in arabesque. When I'm dancing, it's like, it's like I'm in a dream world, and I'm just floating on a cloud, and you hardly feel the floor, and you hardly feel the feet, and you just see yourself in the mirror as a, as a free bird. I don't know how, how else to say. It, it's, it's something that you never get doing anything else. And it's a feeling that carries you away from all the problems and worries. And just like, I, I feel sometimes in class that I'm just being pulled out of my body. And, and I'm just this torso floating around on these legs. <laughs> Arm center, Tom Dew center, the fourth. Kristen Young. Sweeping circle. Julie Marcelli. Slow motion sweep. Molly Story. Three among thousands who dream of becoming ballerinas. Those dreams have pulled them through years of hard work. Now place this fourth. Now in their teens, time is running out. The San Francisco Ballet Company School will soon hold auditions, auditions which will cause one of the three to walk away forever from the dreams that have guided her whole life. Keep going, one, two, three, four, five. Molly Story's passion for dance was clear by the age of four. Her total dedication is paying off. At 17, she's the most advanced student at the Pacific Dance Center in Palo Alto. Okay, that was better. Let yourself lead with this arm a little bit. To prepare her for a major company, the faculty is working with Molly to develop her performing style. Wow, that's better. Today, Richard Gibson, the school director, rehearses her before the daily regimen of classes begins. Kristen Young has been struggling against discouragement. At 16, she's a talented dancer, but she's been repeatedly rejected by major company schools. The reason is her physique. Her legs are too heavy, and her feet don't have the high arches desired in classical ballet. Nonetheless, she's planning to go to the auditions for the San Francisco Ballet School. Julie Marcelli has different concerns about the auditions. Besides being too busty, she's 18, the oldest age the judges will consider. If she doesn't make it this year, she probably never will. Pressure has been mounting in other areas of her life as well. To pay for her ballet classes, she's been getting up at four every morning to run a paper route. She's also working hard to finish high school. Every student has two great anxieties, age and physique. Most ballet careers are finished by age 35, so companies are demanding younger and younger dancers. As her fellow students become professionals, a girl of 16 begins to feel old. Companies also demand bodies with lines that are endlessly long and clean. Stage lights magnify performers dramatically, so at the auditions, the judges will look for extremely thin dancers with long legs and long necks. 30 second warning before we start, take the bars out. Anyone who isn't in when I start doesn't come in. Okay, preparation. And up, and diada. 
Entrance day, Coupe Bure. Fourth, turn, turn, out, in. And three, stay. Chasse up. Stay seven and eight. Now, people, watch carefully. Changement, changement, lift three, four, down five, six, stretch plie, again, and a two. And Most of the students make special arrangements to attend high school in the morning. Then there's a commute to the studio, the long afternoon of classes, dinner, rehearsals, homework, and bed. Go, and one, and two, and three. Now keep going around to the other side, bring her legs up, she sits up, all the way straight, no, not on his shoulder, and she's gonna come down in arabesque, the other way. <laughs> right, try that with your partner. That doesn't finish sitting on the boy's shoulder. Now make a mink coat and bring her up, that's right, arms high. Girls, whatever you do, once you get around his neck, don't start wiggling. <laughs> boys, let me tell you one... <laughs> now look, boys, you have to let the head go forward a little bit. But you can't do this or she falls right over. Okay, let's see, first group. And cross the legs down. One, two, up, down, and one, two, up, and around, up. With little time for friendships outside of the school, the students turn to each other for moral support. But a strong undercurrent of competition inevitably prevails. You're in class, and you have your friends there, but it seems strange because they want the same things you do. And one day it's going to come down to the matter of who's going to get them. And maybe there's not going to be enough room for you. And it, it hurts to think about because the relationships aren't completely destroyed, but how can you really be friends with somebody who's, who wants the same exact thing you want in life? Julie's mother enrolled her in ballet lessons when she was nine. It wasn't until she was 11 that she became serious about a ballet career. By 12, she was leaving home every summer to study in New York or San Francisco. Julie came to the Pacific Dance Center when she was 14 to complete her training for a professional career. there's no reason not to. Sometimes we take the, the things about us that make us unique and, and that are wonderful, that can be wonderful assets to us, and because they're not absolutely what the norm is, mm -hmm. we think that they're not good. And that's not true. You have wonderful, unique qualities. You have to find your, your, your place as a dancer, and that's why the, the most versatile training that you can get, the better. Because you don't fit into the mold of the, what people have, the picture of the ideal classical dancer. But you're a dancer. And I hope that's how you're thinking. Yeah. I hope you look in the mirror and say, oh, that beautiful creature, I love you. All the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. But I hope that's part of it, and I hope that's becoming more than normal. Kristen was five when she started lessons in the home of a ballet teacher in Sunnyvale, California. By 12, she was performing with a semi-professional troupe in San Jose. Her family spent one summer vacation following Kristen while she was on tour. 
At 14, she received her first rejection notice. A lot of times I feel like all these, these dreams and love of dancing gets swallowed up by just this, this stereotype ballerina that they're looking for now. This youth and this thinness and this archy feet and is that going to keep me from dancing? I think it'd be, it'd be so sad and, and yet it's so realistic and it's something that I have to, I have to face all the time. Every audition I go to, I know they, they look at my feet and they kind of go, you know, well, I don't know, you know, and they look, they look at your legs and they kind of, you know, is, is she worth putting time into? You know, will she look bad on stage? You know, will she fit in with the rest of my dancers that I have in the core? You know, is she too tall? Is she too short? You know, and that aspect of dancing is sad, and I, and I wish we could go away from it, but it's, it's real, and I, I guess I could say I've done a good job of realizing it and coping with it, but yet my heart just bleeds every time I don't get looked at as a dancer, but I get looked at as a body. Molly danced her first solo at the age of six. Although she showed great promise, her parents chose to shelter her as long as possible from the fierce competition of company school auditions. For the last two years, Molly has been studying at the Pacific Dance Center on full scholarship. The attention Molly receives from the faculty is well noted by Kristen and the other students. Molly's a really dear friend of mine, and I can never break that up with anything like envy, which I do have a lot for her. And our friendship would never be broken up, but it does affect the way I feel about the school because I feel like I don't have a chance here as much as I should have. I was thinking how beautiful she is. I was thinking about how all the hours of, of work that I know that she's put in and all the, you can tell. You can tell she's worked hard. You can tell she wants to dance. And you can tell she's, that she's gonna make it. Molly is known throughout the school for her unwavering determination in approaching her work. She feels little pull from the world outside of dance. As far as the social life is, with high school, forget it. I'm not interested at all. When you're not dancing, you want to make sure that um, you're not going to do anything to hurt yourself. And you want to take care of your hurts when you're out. Also, for me, I am really conscious of that too, especially not doing anything outside of all that's going to hurt me. because. I'm really pushing myself now so I can get into a company. And when you push yourself a lot, you tend to get more injuries. And I can't, aff I mean, it puts you back so much when you get an injury. For me to get an injury outside of ballet, I'd just be really bummed out. Molly is a very good student and very hard worker. Uh, and Molly always take a step and try to perfect it and try to work on it. See, the other day, all the girls went to the beach. Molly was in class. Molly's always in class. Even when I, I came to America two years ago, and I remember when I was a guest teacher here, I popped in a small studio, and I saw a little blonde girl practicing steps. And I remember saying to Richard that time, this girl's going to be a good dancer one day, because she take and work and, and love working on it. And of course, it's, I see in my little student a lot of you know, little mollies coming up. Okay, all the first group, people that know it. First group, all the people that know it. Yehuda Mayor okay. teaches the intermediate Ready? class. And five. 
It won't be long before these little girls feel the strain of auditions. For the moment, though, a ballet career is still a distant fantasy of satin point shoes, sparkling tutus, and thunderous applause. Next year, as the training becomes more intense, half will drop out. Go! Up, in, feet, feet, go! Travel! Feet, feet, shake, 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 Up, in, run, run! Okay, okay. Gwen, why you don't do it? Okay, who was in the class? Diana, you know it? I have to push you all to Ballet 4 next year. And we have a lot of works to do, and you don't have all your life to study. This is a time that you really should concentrate, yeah? So don't be so much sick and be in classes. Now, Nina is going to show us the Petit Allegro, because she's never sick, and she's always in class, and she's doing very well. So everybody just watch. Nina, show everybody the Petit Allegro, and then we work on it. And five, six, and up. In, pas de chat, pas de chat. Good. Up, in, pas de chat, pas de chat. Jeté, jeté, jeté. Up, in, run like crazy. And up, in, up, and, hey, up, 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 and feet, and feet. Up, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Nina, it was very nice. The only thing is the audience sit here and you do jeté with your papa to the audience. Huh? Uh-uh. I want to be a famous ballerina, and I just really want to be really worldwide known. I hope I am someday. Do you think you have a chance for it? I hope so. I, don't, I think I might have a little chance, but not very much. But since there's so many people, like, you know, the male dancer has much more of a possibility of being a dancer because there aren't that many. But then there's so many girls that want to be dancers. And this is just one place to know about. In California, I don't know how many, and that's just one state in the whole world. And so. I wonder if these nine and ten year olds realize what they're getting themselves into if they've taken into consideration all the sacrifices they're going to have to make later on in their life. Because for myself, I realized when I was that age, I thought, oh, this is what I want to do, and it's going to be a wonderful life, you know, ballerina being on stage, but that's not what it's about. There's so many things that happen to you that once in a while you start to realize where the sacrifices are being made. Um, for example, I'm going to high school and there's a lot of things I want to do, lots of activities that seem fun where I could get involved with people my own age and I, I don't have time for them. But I just think about it and I say, well, it's okay because I'm doing something with my life and I'm, I'm going to be a ballerina. But I don't know where these sacrifices are ever going to end. I do have dreams about other things besides ballet. I, 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 I hope and pray someday I will be married and have a family of my own. And, and I, I, I also expect to continue on with school training and, you know, read as, as much as I can and not be isolated from that because I believe, I believe strongly that a, that a dancer should be a well-rounded person also because I, I've heard, you know, you hear a lot of sad stories about people who have totally dedicated their entire life to ballet and then if something like an injury or an illness keeps them from dancing, then where are they? Few are suited to teach to teach well. A few are, even fewer, are suited to choreograph. So what are they going to do? With, with that thought, one should be prepared academically to do other things. Now, if uh, a 17-year-old is at a point in their dancing that they can go into a professional company, to delay that for four years while they're getting an academic, uh, further academic education would be foolish, again, because there are so few years that they can dance. But they're not as bad as they were. I mean, you know those corns? I got them, I took, when I was in New York, I, went, I got them trimmed. Yeah, because I couldn't stand trimmed? it. Yeah, because they were so killing me. Well, you got a scalpel. 
and he just trimmed it all. Um, yeah. Let me see your big toe. Come he just out. trimmed nice it. His name. No. The no. smallest toenail. I know. I th this see it fell off. Mine? It fell off. Oh, oh did it? Yeah. Let me Cause see. look, my toenail takes my big toe. I have a corn in between. You do? I have, oh, those are yeah. the worst. They hurt so bad. I have it on both sides. That sounds oh, bad, so though. Karen Sue yeah, had this thing that was really, really disgusting. Otherwise, my feet are okay. I had the blisters there. Sure. Yeah. That was really sick. And then that hurt. That hurt so bad. And shum. Silver feet. Plie. Ah. That should be a spring. Sue Sue melt through the feet. Uh, capture the heel, April. Stay up and passe. Back. Plie. And brush. Now behind you, the arabesque on relevé. Behind. Behind. Roll mia 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 pa. Cross the susu, pa, up. Please stay up, balance. Forward, don't turn in those legs. Keep them turned out, April. And a back. Arm second. Bure, apprehensive, apprehensive, apprehensive. Turn out, turn out, turn out, turn. And we finish. The talent's there, that I've always seen. Mm -hmm. The technique is there now, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not consistent. Yeah. So, so many things that you have, and you have good things now as a dancer, now you've got to just keep working it and making it consistent. And you know you're very young, you tend to look at, uh, I mean, not you in particular, yeah. but dance is your age tend to look at the one or two people who have a big career at your age and think that you're old. Yeah. And you, for the norm, you're at a very good place for your age. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of discouraging, though, to, you know, because it's like, I feel like I have to do it now if I'm going to be doing it in a place you that I want to go. You do it now, but you don't have to be there now. You have to do all you can do now. Yeah. But, and you don't, I certainly wouldn't say, oh, Molly, you've got a lot of time, you know, sit oh, no. around and rest. But <laughs> yeah. I will say that you don't have to be frantic and you, and you certainly have no cause to have negative feelings about where, about where you are as a dancer now. Yeah. You can have whatever you want if you're real smart. I really need to get into a major company, well, not really a major company, especially a company where I'm being paid so I can support myself because if I don't, I can't continue doing what I want to do, and that is ballet. So to get in a company, it means everything to me because I, I really love ballet, and when I don't dance, you know, I feel as though there's, I'm not all there. Sometimes it's very difficult for me to express myself verbally, but with ballet, it just seems to come out all right. And what I want to say, or what I want to express, is totally there, and everybody seems to understand. The San Francisco auditions take place tomorrow, and all the other students went home hours ago to rest. But Molly continues to work, ignoring a painfully injured tendon in her left foot. Molly has even more at stake in her dance career than the other students. She's adept academically, but as she spends more and more time at the studio, 
High school and college fade farther and farther away. The auditions are finally at hand. Every spring, hundreds of aspiring dancers arrive at the San Francisco Ballet School. Like Julie, everyone here knows that the San Francisco Ballet draws most of its members from the company school. For each of these girls, acceptance is a crucial step in her ballet career. What do they look Goose. like? Goose. 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 Yeah, All I had yesterday was two bananas and an orange and a glass of orange apple juice. Oh gosh. I would. Well, I did you have a lot of dancing in the previous day rehearsal? Um, I took class over at the Reyes, and I found oh. out they're going to be teaching all through. All here, through. We go. Oh, here we go. 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 hallway and find, find where you are numerically. The school has already auditioned huge crowds in 20 cities across the country. Here in San Francisco, this is the last group to be judged. From this room full of dancers, only 10 will be chosen. If you walk in there and you're super nervous, then you're not going to perform your best. And so I thought, you know, this is it. This is the absolute most important day. And I was just completely nervous. And I was getting sick and really worried. OK. I'm Richard Kamok, the director of the San Francisco Ballet School. I'd like to welcome everyone. Uh, we will do a bar and center, just a regular class. After the bar, we will make some eliminations. The people at the table or the faculty members and Ron Spicer will be accompanying us. Let's start with the left side of the bar. I've decided that I'm going to think, I'm not dancing for them, and I'm dancing for me, and that's why I'm doing it. I'm not dancing to impress anybody but myself, and if I'm happy with my performance, that's all that counts. It doesn't matter what they think of me or if they reject me because I'm not the type they want. I'm dancing for me, and if it makes me feel good, then I'm just gonna come, keep coming back and auditioning until I make it. Okay, and switch lines. And uh, one. <laughs> she from Gibson's. She from. Uh... Students who are acceptable are referred to as A's. Those who are not acceptable as NAs. Fifteen years old, sixteen. The audience opening out. What do you have for O4? What, uh, what's her age? 16. I think she's A, yeah. Number 6 is no. She's from our school. I do thank you for coming, for those of the people that we are going to be eliminating. But again, we have such, we don't have the space to accept but a very few new students into the summer training session. So we'd like to thank the following people. 1348, 1351, 1355, 1368. I feel like they should want me to dance for them in their company because I have so much love for dancing that I can't see how they couldn't see it. 1405, 1407, 1409, 1417, uh, sorry, 1416, 1418, 1601, 16, 17, 
1953 and 54. Those dancers, thank you very much. Everyone else, stay where you are. You know, when you audition and you, they look, they're looking at your body and they're looking at your feet, and I just want to put a sign on my face and says, look at me, you know, look at the way I dance. Okay. Julie, Molly, and Kristen have all made it through the first round of eliminations. Now, in the final critical moments, they must outshine each other. Okay, so I think we'll let you go and you'll be notified by mail. Huh? We'll let you know, we'll let everyone know if they, the, the outcome of the audition within a couple of weeks. Thank you, ladies. After an exhausting day sustained by coffee and cigarettes, the judges struggle to make their final decisions. Well, no. No, mm -mm. no, no not yeah. the beautiful pre Raphaelite no, no, redhead. No, no, oh, She's real thin. redhead. No, not no. that one. Uh -uh. She's thin, she was here before. Julie, I wouldn't say Julie had red hair. Well, there's a slight red yeah. tint to it. Brownish. Mm -hmm. I, 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 without knowing any of this, I liked her. You, you liked, liked her? Yeah. Well, I liked she's her without knowing her background. Her background. I just looked at her and liked the class. Do you want to look her up? 78? She has a lot of weird tabs and ginchy things. I don't like some way. I don't like the way her body is forming. Julie Marcelli becomes the subject of debate. Well, that's what we thought the first few years that we saw her. But, she but as I see her each year, I don't like the way that her <coughs> body is building, and I don't see that she changes anything. Should we do a The only thing is, well, we ended up with an A, I guess, huh? I don't this is A know. question mark. What do you have? A? Okay, A. 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 N -A. N -A. N -A. No, let N -A. everyone speak for themselves. A. I have an A. I just want to get it done somehow. I had an A because whenever N -A. she's in class, she does this. And yeah, she, she does, does work hard. hard. I said A. N A. So A's raise your hand. A's raise your hand. And A's raise your hand. I think your A's have it. O2. Julie was rejected. At 18, she isn't likely to get another chance. 13. Is that already? 14. And A. And A. Maybe what's your mind? Several weeks have passed since the auditions, and classes continue as usual at the Pacific Dance Center. Two steps. All the letters have been received. Feel it good, Chris. Kristen was disappointed once again, but hasn't spoken much about it. Seven up. Your right leg lifted to passe. Julie's letter came as the final blow after a year of grinding pressures. She's been arriving at the studio later and later, and has even begun to miss some classes. And one. Easy neck, Chris. Plie, Molly was not only accepted, but was offered a scholarship as well. It's Julie's last day. Where's she going? She's leaving. Where? She's nowhere. 
She's just stopping. Julie and Yeah. She's stopping there. Yeah. She might be doing jazz, though. Why? Not her thing. I understand that more. Yeah. <laughs> Where is she? Is she not taking point? I don't know. I'm gonna check it out. I want to expand it more. I want to, you know, do musicals. I want to dance and sing and do all of that together. And and um, and dancing. See, because I know that I could dedicate myself to that because that would be the rest of my personality. But with the just the ballet, if I was gonna do like you said, you know, just you know dancing and nothing else, I would, part of me would die, but it's so, right, that has it's so big, and it yeah. is, it's so part of, you know, my whole personality. Yeah, I have the same feeling. I mean, I'm still willing to sacrifice many aspects of the things that I want to do, but I have to spend that time dancing, you know, or they want to start class. I think we have to go. Well, Julie, you know what? Before we go, I think we're going to get together a group of people and maybe have a party or something, but you're definitely invited. But, you know, your phone number is in the office, isn't it? Because I'm going to, just be bored, I'll invite a bunch of people. I hope you can come. Take it easy. Uh, uh. <laughs> Light, light, pa. Light, light, pa. Dia. Pa, 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 na fifth. Good. And da. Fifth. This is too hard. Pa. That's better. Pa, pa. Di, da, sha. Di, da, sha. Ya. Da, da, da. It's the PK phone to PK clump. PK phone to PK is in the first step. I guess I can never really quit, but my decision not to, not to go on about it professionally, um, I think it, it started a long time ago, but I just never really recognized it. And I, I was going through my training, and I hit you know a peak, so to speak. I was, I was on the up, you know, places wanted me, San Francisco Ballet took me, you know, and the next year I went to New York, and it, I was just very up, you know, nothing could stop me, I had a beautiful body, I had talent, I had potential, everything was going for me. And then, as, you know, my body started developing, and things started changing, um, all of a sudden, um, I wasn't the same talent anymore, and um, people were looking for different things. And I, I got my first rejection notice, you know, and, and I thought, I thought maybe it's because I'm not working hard enough. Maybe, you know, if I put something more into this, maybe, you know, that's what it is. I'm just, I'm not disciplined enough. Maybe, maybe this is it. And the thing is that I, I would keep thinking over in my head, you know, maybe, maybe you really don't want to do it. And I, I, but I'd ignore that. I'd say, no, 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 this is what I really want to do. I've been working all these years for it, and nothing's going to stop me. Not any of these rejection notices. They're going to just, they're going to eat their words because I'm going to make it. And I kept trying and trying. And the thing I noticed is that all of a sudden, little things didn't matter anymore. Like, I was beginning to get heavy, and I'd go on a diet, but it really didn't matter if I stayed on it or not. I mean, there was always, you know, the next day or tomorrow, because I, I was losing my discipline. I was losing this, you know, this force that, that wanted to be number one. And I guess that was my first sign that, that I knew I was not going to be able to be a dancer. And I would, I would think about it more, and I would say, well, why did I want to be a dancer in the first place? You know, what was it that was so important to me that I had to make this expression? And it was that that was my personality, and that was that was the inner part of me. And and I could take the person inside of me, and I could make it dance, and I could make it dance so beautifully to music. And I could do all these things with this talent, this ability to dance. But for some reason, it was losing its meaning. 
I was, I just evidently found that maybe I could express myself some other way, that dancing wasn't the only expression. And I guess the time really came when, you know, the cards were on the table and I was told by my instructor that I have lots of talent, which was something I hadn't heard in quite some time, and that he saw lots of promise for me, but I'm just, I'm not built like a dancer. I have beautiful legs and feet and beautiful arms, but I'm just, I'm too bestie. And I realized that, and I thought, I can either take this and I can say, the world is not gonna screw me over. I'm gonna dance and I'm gonna show them that I don't need to be a stereotype, that I don't need to have this, you know, flat, concave body, you know, that I can be a woman and still dance and I can make it my thing in life. This is my mission where I can go out there and I can show them that you can be any kind of dancer you want if you have that feeling in your soul because that's what makes you a dancer. It's not the body. And it's not, you know, where your extension is. It's the feeling in your heart that you can carry out to other people. And that's what makes you dance. Well, I kept trying and I kept trying. And the thing is, is that nobody wanted to see that. They didn't want to see the ability because I would go to auditions. And I would just dance my heart out. I would be flying across the room expressing emotion. And while the rest of the people were hitting their line in their position and going through the motions and showing them their technique, and most of them got acceptance letters with the bodies while I kept getting rejection notices. I understand what she's going through and you know it's just, it didn't it means something to me because we spent so much time together and you know driving together back and forth for miles and miles in a car and rehearsing together and you know going through heartbreaks together and you know things like that and you get very close that in, in a way that you never really get close with friends almost because you you have to be together you know you have to be together all that time and you learn how to be together and like each other and it's you know Although I don't feel sad that she's doing it, because I know that when she, when someone feels that pull on them to do something else, like sing or do something, you should, you know, because there, there is no room in dancing for people who, you know, who don't want to just do it, especially in ballet. There's just no room. So many people are doing it. Now, when you sing that first song, I want you to let me know. Okay. The singing's my name. Really? Nothing drastic. No, no drastic. Yehuda um, told me that he wanted me to come in for adult classes on his scholarship, he said. So. Did they show you? I used to, I used to have planned pictures and names and places that I wanted to be and end up, but I've let go of them because you can't. I don't think you can do it that way. You know, it, it's like you can't. You, you're. It's like being a teenager trying to guess the name of the man you're going to marry. You know, what what difference is the name anyways? That's why I feel. You know. If it's not a big, major New York City ballet company, I'll still be able to dance. I'll still be able to perform. It, those names, they seem important when you're younger, and, I, and they are important to some people. Unfortunately, some people have their minds set on those names and those big companies, and, and then if they don't make it, it's like, you know, big letdown, and, and that's the end of that. But to me, I've, I don't know if it's more realistic or if it's just big, reality that I've had to face. I don't have any big names anymore that I'm searching for. I'm just searching to dance and to perform.
even if it's a little company somewhere that nobody's heard of, if somebody sees me dancing and enjoys my performance, then it'll be worth it. And that's what my big goal is. My, my ultimate fantasy, my unrealistic fantasy, is to be able to jump so high, you don't have to come down. <laughs> Our best. Good. Now, over the head. Shake, good, and... Nice. Wonderful. Good, Molly. Up. Now pick it up, Doug, and... Run. I wish I could give something to everybody that would take away all the pain of ballet. But then on the other hand, there would be only joy in ballet. And you couldn't appreciate the joy if you didn't have the pain. Because if you take away the pain and the work and the, the sacrifices that you have to make, then the, the joy and the satisfaction of it doesn't seem as great. And so I wouldn't want to change anything in ballet. It's perfect for me. yourself to totally at an early age and I don't find that a negative thing I find that a beautiful thing and finish. if one does give totally to it and they find then that it isn't what they want later on they still gained from the experience of giving themselves totally to something because how many people are able to give themselves totally to anything if not to dance to another person to anything. And that experience of total surrender to something, I think, is one of the most positive things that can happen to somebody in their life. Do you think anybody could become a professional dancer? Yeah, yes. they tried yeah. hard enough and they concentrated. Do you think you all can become professional dancers? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Julie Marcelli became a successful performer in Broadway musicals, where her physique and classical ballet training served to her advantage. After several years on New York stages, she married, moved to Los Angeles, and started to raise her family. Julie continues her daily dance training, but is now also working towards an acting career. Kristen Young went on to college and became a computer hardware engineer. She never stopped dancing, however. Following her ballet teacher's advice, she broadened her scope and to this day devotes her free time to performance with a small modern dance company in Portland, Oregon. Molly's story graduated from the San Francisco Ballet School and was hired as an apprentice to the professional company. Then, a new artistic director was hired, and Molly, along with many other company members, was let go. Devastated, she left professional ballet. After several years, she gradually started performing again and founded her own ballet company and school in Tahoe, Nevada. She and her husband recently welcomed their first child. <laughs> 